So guys, uh, how many Bistock developers in this room? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I cannot believe so much. Come on, please. Great. So I love you. And by the way, I created this tool uh, one, one year ago, probably, in March, one, and presented the tool in, uh, during the, during the uh, London event. I spent a lot of uh, blood in this tool. I don't say you time. I spent a lot of blood, OK? Because I worked for, I mean, five months without sleeping, because I worked during the day, OK? So I created this tool to help and to improve my productivity, not only my productivity, but the productivity of my team, developer team, too. But my productivity, too. And another big reason is that I have to save my life. Because when I started to work with Bistock, it was during 2002 version, I was taller. Blonde with blue eyes. So judge you know, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the result after ten years in this talk development. Okay? <laughs> this because I created this tool. Otherwise I'm going to die. I cannot. So what uh, our big challenge about big stock developer? So I'm going to present you our big challenge and how you can solve this challenge in very easy way. Because I think this is a really good idea. I think that a good idea is when you have a really simple solution. OK? Now I'm going to show you. So one of the first problems we have is test a pipeline. It's true or not? Yeah. 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 I want to help you. Yes. OK? So yeah, because it's, it's true, guys. OK? We need to spend a lot of time to test the pipeline and debugging code and so on. So uh, you have I installed this tool. It's pretty simple, not complicated. I'm going to scan the solution. I will show you later. But to test, just right click. I have some menus in Visual Studio. I extend Visual Studio. Inside, now I have, this is another version. The first version is public in, in uh, CN. Uh, this is the new version, okay, with other menus, faster, and I spent uh, two months without sleep, okay, for the new version. Okay, by the way, testing and test pipeline. This is a flat file receive pipeline, so I'm going to take what the instance uh, to test the pipeline and I select uh, a flat file and go to open. That's all. I test the pipeline, flat file. I go to the same with the other version because, okay, I know you are going to think, ah, no, 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 I want to test the XML and so on and all the other stuff. Okay, we are going to do that. So test the pipeline, but this is, in this case, in the other version, OK? So in this, I can test a pipeline in very, very easy way. Another big problem is when I'm going to test my code. So I created this demo component. This is a pipeline component. This is a big challenge for us, OK? Because I created this code. I deployed this code. I deployed this component, I created a pipeline, now I need to test and debug this one. So this is the pipeline, this is the component, and right click test component. I'm going to select the, I'm going to select my instance, and I keep the windows here. I'm going to my test demo component, I have my breakpoint, and from here, the back, attached to process, and now I have my process here. OK, this is my Windows. I'm going to attach, add, 
and cross finger, cross hole, and run, run test. test. That's all. I am going to debug all of my code. I know what the developer, bits of developer are going to think because you know how many time, how much time we are going to spend <laughs> to do that. Yes. Okay. Other. The other is okay. Ah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the result. <laughs> okay. The other is this is uh, this is crazy. Uh, you don't know, but this is crazy. This is a crazy feature. Because a lot of time, I am occurring in the same, same situation. For example, I have some behavior in my development environment and different behavior in production. Come on. Eh, that's crazy. So every time the same question. So are you sure this is the last version in production? And the guy, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> No, I don't believe so. I'm not sure. You, you are not sure about that. So we are going to check this one. So I try to think a solution, OK? And I found this solution because I like to do simple things, because you have to be simple, not complicated. So right click, troubleshooting, because we are in troubleshooting way now. We have to understand what's happening. So Jack Hammering. You know jackhammer? You know what is a jackhammer? Jackhammer. You use jackhammer, no? To break the rod. <laughs> so I'm going to jackhammer this talk. <laughs> because I need to understand what is in production. I need to check, please. So I'm going to use jackhammer, no? So open jackhammer. I can select my this talk environment because we have multi environment, because we are complicated. This talk developer. Uh, do you think that we are a normal person? We are not. <laughs> a digital developer is a person that think in the batching mode, the batching mode, and a recoverable interchange. This is dangerous. By the way, we are going to select the environment, OK? And here, we are going to select what we are going to check and compare. I want to compare the source code about this orchestration with the orchestration that is deployed inside the stock environment. I want to be sure. OK. I see some faces here. Wow, that's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> yes, it's crazy. Definitely. <laughs> Double click. I can compare. I can extract. If I want, I can extract the orchestration from the BizTalk environment, and I'm going to recreate the orchestration in Visual Studio, if I want. I am going to compare. Click. Congrats. Lucky boy. Are <laughs> you Woo! Are anyway. But I know that, I know that you are starting to think, hey, OK, it's a message box. Just show me. I want the proof. OK. I the proof. <laughs> construct message, I'm going to change this one, construct message two. Okay, I'm going to save. I am going to select another time the camera. It's okay. Double click, compare. Oh, are different. So what I'm going to do? Select okay, and I'm going to save all my the two files, two different orchestration files in one folder. So you can use the tool as you want, with if uh, all you want just to understand what the difference is. So just create OK. I already saved now the file inside the folder. But in the case, you can just double click and extract. Click. I select one folder. Click OK. That's all. This is the orchestration in production in this moment. See this one construct message one. Another critical thing for us is about the critical dependency. You know that we, we, we have different BizTalk applications, and we can use different artifacts using dependency between the application. But when we are going to deploy, we are going to take a big problem, you know, 
the pain zero. No, you cannot deploy. You have a lot of some dependency. Well, right click and detox NOS critical dependency. Select the environment. That's all. So I am going to show all dependency about this project inside the Bistock environment. So I'm going to solve, you know, because probably there is some code that using a pipeline from another application and some other stuff. Right? Do you like it? <laughs> ah, yeah, I know you like it. You are an integration animal. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to scare you. Yeah, yeah, believe me. Now I'm going to scare you. Absolutely. What's the big, big, bigger problem for us? Our dependency, right? Because our, in our project, we are going to use different dependencies inside the solution. We have different projects, no? and different projects, different artifacts inside. So our orchestration that use different transformation. Transformation use uh, different schemas. Schemas use schemas, and so on in different projects. So for us, it's a big problem to understand what we are going to do during, the, during our job. The only thing we have is this is solution explorer, right? OK. So what I created, I had a nice discussion, really pretty nice discussion, last uh, two days ago with one of my dear friends, Tom Carter. There, Tom, there. He's a really brilliant person. I like to speak about technology with him. But why we are going to use Visual Studio? <laughs> By the way, so I created this term. Dynamic development. It's crazy, huh? The name is crazy. Dynamic development. What is that? Yes. I show you. I click OK, and I'm going to open the orchestration. Double click, what is this on the left? So this on the left, yeah. Now I'm going to open the orchestration and you know our problem. What's our, our problem, problem here? We have some different transformation. We have some messages inside, okay? And we are going to use a lot of stuff inside this orchestration. So I click the orchestration, that's all. Yeah, that's all. So we have the message used inside the orchestration. And for each message, the schema used inside the message. This works with the multiple message, too. And I, in this case, I have the vision about all the messages used inside the orchestration, all the cost root message. And for each cost root message, the mapping and the schema. Logically, I can navigate, I can open the schema, I can open the orchestration, I can open the transformation. But I start to think that what we really need, we really need is continuously the vision about dependency during our job. Because I'm going to, for example, update a schema. This schema is used by another schema, it's another schema, another schema, another schema. So if you update a field about this schema, you have to be careful because this schema is used by some other article in some of the solution. So when you are going to click here, expand, expand more and more and more. I can go ahead as I want in the pipeline too. See this pipeline? See this pipeline? For example, if I have to work with this pipeline, okay? And I have to work with this pipeline and with the schemas use it inside this pipeline. What I have to do? In the old way, I have just to click here and document, click here, <coughs> go here. Come on, guys. I can cry. <laughs> I can I cry. <laughs> just a question, all of you. How many times you cry during the day? <laughs> Just ask for me. No, I'm not joking, guys. I'm not kidding you. How many times? Me, at least before the tools? Four, five, probably. Four, five. I don't know you, but for me, seriously. 
So here, I'm going just to click on the pipeline, and I have all the schema inside the pipeline, and multiple schema, only one. That's all, right? I'm fast, it's fast. And I can have the same vision in a different way. For example, this schema use this schema, this schema use this schema, and so on, okay? So I have, for example, right click, troubleshooting, internal dependency. I don't want to open the artifact. So the schema one using schema two, okay? But we have another problem here, because you know about the dependency, recurrency, dependency, and so on. It's become complicated. So I'm trying to think a solution, and it was, OK, what am I going to create? OK, I didn't sleep a night for this. I think so. And it's a heuristic internal propagation. I, I wrote a, a, some crazy algorithm to understand <laughs> what about dependency and so on. So now the result is going to change because I'm going to do this. That's all. Right, because the tool tries to think, OK, be careful, because this schema, use this schema, this schema, use this schema, and so on. And I can do that in all the sense I want, OK? OK. The last thing is not a lot. There are a lot of stuff inside this tool. I won't just show you the most important. And one of these is this one. I'm proud about this. I'm proud. Because the first version during London session, how many of you was in, were in London session? Ah, OK. So do you remember how much time the tools need to scan all of the solution? This was the same solution. Was around 10 seconds. Around 10 seconds, because the tools need to scan all the file just to take all the information about the solution. Right. So see now. Scan the solution, Tick. yeah, right? Just a minute. One millisecond, yeah, one millisecond. And what I show you is this feature. This feature is crazy because, uh, I mean, I have this orchestration, this orchestration use all. Okay, all. <laughs> circular, not circular, schema, not schema, all. All possible kind about these thoughts. Eh? This is crazy. Okay, it's <laughs> crazy, crazy orchestration. Just I spent tonight just to develop. I want to create the most crazy orchestration in the world. This is the most crazy orchestration in the world. So right click. So the problem is I I just I created this orchestration and I was gone for holiday, I don't know what, for another project. And I'm back. And today, I have to understand what is the organization doing, right? <laughs> this is a problem for me because, OK, we are going to take a problem here. So what I have to do, I created this one is the reporting reflector. I'm going to click, select the environment, and click. OK. This creates a report. Is a report and describe all the orchestration is doing, step by step, in graphical way, so it's very easy to read. And there are some statistics. So you can execute the reporting, the refactor, from, for example, one artifact, schema, one orchestration, or by project. So you create a report for all the artifact inside, or for all the solution, for example. And this is very useful because I have a lot of information. See this one? I have, for example, the, the port used inside the orchestration in administration console. For example, if I want to test this orchestration, see this one? I have some icon, click, and woo! <laughs> I love it! <laughs> That's cool, guys. <laughs> That's cool. Absolutely. And I have execute and so on. And I have some scope, loop. So this one, this is crazy, huh? See this one. You see the ball? This ball. Why the ball? 
Because you know that in this talk you have the persistent point. Oh, and there is the good way to use a persistent point and the bad way. One bad way, for example, is to put a same port in a while loop, for example, without any atomic scope or something else. Okay, this is not a good choice, right? So I put a bomb. <laughs> Just to advise you, oh, be careful, man, that you can have some problem in production, right? So the problem is better you check this part of orchestration. And so you have a lot of stick, a lot of stuff. And the best thing is, you see, for each artifact, I can click and I can open the artifact. So I can navigate, open the artifact, and go away. Right. Last, 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 then you stop it. Is resourcing. Click here. Because I have to organize my developer, all my team, right? And every time my team asks me, Sonino, where is the documentation? Sonino, where is the, our library for this project? And so on, every time, every time. Send email, send email, send email, is there, is there, is there. Okay, so I created this feature because in this case, I just only have to configure Visual Studio, okay, and put some parameters. I have some different files that I can customize as I want. And this creates a lot of tabs. For example, this is my Office 365 library company. Okay, this is the library folder, for example, for this particular project. So I can write to my team. Okay, because I think that it's really important to keep the developer in the comfort zone, right? To improve the productivity. Because I don't care, I don't want to go in, in Internet Explorer or something else, administration console or other stuff. So you can use this one. You can also drag and drop file, right? Very easy, it's very easy, okay? I have some stuff, community, developer center, technet, technet, and you can put all you want and customize all you want, right? Sandro, my friend, Ferreira Block, my preferred block. Sandro, my preferred friend, I know it. Technet, and so on, right? Okay? So, uh, I based on maturity assessment, for example, I think you know this project one absolutely vital series, great project. So, I think, uh, because I have a lot of stuff, so I think I just talk. Um, but if you won't speak about that, I will be here and ask the expert.